The Jerusalem Botanical Gardens opened to the public in 1985. It contains more than 10,000 species of plants, the largest plant collection in Israel. We're going to see what's called the best, the best kept secrets in Jerusalem. We're going to see uh, blooms and we're going to see water and tranquility, lots of beauty and uh, hope you enjoy the trip. Here we go. The gardens have six sections with plants from around the world. First stop, plants from Africa. So this is a relatively new project of ours. It's called the African Savannah Grass Maze. We want to show how plants are used in Africa. So we planted this Southern African uh, grass, uh, but we've actually buried within the maze six plants, all of which help humans in some kind of way. So when kids come here, they get a sheet and they have to find all six plants. It quickly becomes clear to me that Sue is full of stories about the gardens. Okay, the story of the hut is that we, uh, we actually, well it was designed in-house, we built it with um, children, the children helped us put the mud on, and then when we got to the roof we knew that we wanted to use the grass from the grass maze because that's what they really use in Africa, but nobody knew how to thatch. Now several years ago we had a program to train uh, new immigrant Ethiopians as gardeners, one of them joined our staff, and he said no problem, I know how to do it, so he took the grass and he thatched the roof. Here we go again. This 2,000-year-old burial cave was discovered here in 1902. Uh, we've given it a kind of botanical twist because we discovered that during that period, Jews used to bury their dead in caves, they had family caves, then they would come back after a year, collect the bones, put them in a box called an ossuary, and because they lived in the world of plants, they would decorate the, uh, the ossuaries with, uh, with plant motifs. So if you actually look, we've got, a, we've got an ossuary here, uh, which has a plant motif on it. Israel's geographic location is unique, giving rise to a very wide variety of plants. Israel sits at the, at the junction of three continents, of Asia, Europe and Africa, and it also sits at the junction, we're right, particularly in Jerusalem, we're right on the seam between the Mediterranean and the desert. We have a, a high density of uh, native plants here. We've got something like 2,700 native plants in Israel, of which 400 are in danger of extinction. The Tropical Conservatory contains plants from rainforests around the world, including useful plants like pineapple and rice. Some of the most notorious rainforest plants are the carnivorous ones. If plants find themselves in conditions where the, water, where, the, where the earth is very poor, such as rainforests where the rain is constantly washing out the nutrients, they develop other methods for food. At the end of the hair is a little blob which looks a bit like nectar. The insect flies in, you know, with a good appetite, gets stuck on the hairs, the plant slowly curls over the insect and then it lets out certain chemicals that actually break the insect down into mush and the plant absorbs the nitrogen. One of the latest additions to the gardens is the newly opened 500 meter long Bible path. What we discovered was that plants literally litter the Bible, if you like. There are numerous hundreds of references to plants and parts of plants in the Bible. Why? Because the Israelites lived on the land. One desert tree on the Bible path is the tamarisk, planted by Abraham when he got to Beersheba. Some people think that the, uh, there's in, the, in, the, in the natural conditions there's an aphid that attacks the tamarisk and it produces a kind of sugary substance and there are some people who say that that was the biblical manna. The flower train, as it's called, is one of the most popular ways to see the entire gardens. And in the spring and summer, it definitely lives up to its name.